Hi guys, this is Elise. And this is Olaf, and we're from Amaranth, and you're watching Access Unlimited. Hello, this is Alicia from Access Unlimited TV, and we're here again with Olaf and Elise from Amaranth. So it's been almost two years, and they're finally back on the show, and they're about to play, an, I assume, an amazing show later on. So are you excited? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Very excited. Uh, like you said, it's been two years since we played at the Gothic Theater the last time, and last time was very stressful since we arrived late. So we see this as our chance of uh, getting back. revenge. Revenge. Yes. I think that was when our tire broke on the bus, and is that what happened? What happened? Something like that. Something happened, <clears throat> and we didn't arrive the same time we were supposed to go on stage. Kind of. <laughs> well, it's great that you're here on time now, so no worries there, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and soundcheck was really relaxed and everything is perfectly set up, so we're ready to, to rock tonight. Yeah. Awesome. And it's Valentine's Day and everything. Happy Valentine's Day, by the way. Oh, thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Can I get a hug? That's so sweet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now my Valentine is fulfilled. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm flattered. <laughs> Alright, so you guys just recently released Maximalism just last year, and it's amazing. And we want to know, what are your favorite songs on the album? Mm, like, with every album, my favorites change. Because I listen too much, like a lot to one song, and it also depends on what mood I'm in. But I still have, I think, I still have, like, On The Rocks, because it's very fun. And the Supersonic, because that's also very fun. And... Uh, uh, I mean, it would be selfish to say endlessly, but it's just like, yeah, the song still so. touched me and I'm still like kind of in the mood. So that's that's still one of the songs that I think that we did great, the best. Yeah, Yeah, it's uh, just like Elise said, it's changed a little bit, uh, but I think still think that Boomerang is one of the strongest oh, that. songs <laughs> that we've ever written when, in terms of chorus and songwriting and, and everything. It's a very straightforward, almost a simple song, but that's the kind of song that is like the hardest to write. <clears throat> I think currently it's that, um, it's uh, Boomerang and also uh, Limitless, which we're, I think we're also both very proud of. Yeah. Because it's a very different song. So. That's true, and we haven't played Limitless live yet, and I can't wait to do that. Mm -hmm. But live, I must say that that song is the most fun uh, fun song to play live. All right. It sounds, sounds better live than on the album, I think. <laughs> All right, and speaking of Boomerang, you recently released the music video for that. So how was the making of that? Was it pretty fun? Uh, it's always very fun. Uh, although, actually, I can reveal that I didn't sleep at all before the recording, <laughs> because there is always early mornings, and we, <laughs> we always talk about it like, why do we have to be here early in the morning? But that is why, because we would want to get the best location. And, you know, the other people don't show up until like around 10 or something usually so we have to be there at 4 or 5 in the morning just to make sure that we get like we don't yeah there is not going to be other people there and that we are uh, able to rent the place that we you know rent so it was fun even though I was extremely tired and very dizzy um, but uh, yeah besides that it, we had great people joining us like a lot of friends who came and that's always very fun and uh, it's always very fun to like pretend that you're some kind of action hero even though we actually fail the mission but we will <laughs> succeed with it next time <laughs> well I it, uh, just like Elise said once more it was uh, it was a lot of fun it was a very early morning but I think the really cool thing was to see how um, it went from the script idea we were sitting in a tour bus in Spain just throwing around different ideas writing down the script sending it to Patrick and then following it up with you know with uh, locations and with the extras and everything and then just having this image in your head and then seeing it you know come to life seeing all those people doing you know really good work and then of course seeing the final re result being really amazing so it was a very i mean it was a little bit of a playground of course you take it seriously because it's very important but it's also it's a lot of fun yes yeah but that's the that's the issue with all our videos we always have a vision and then when you see the final, that's a very fulfilling feeling. And there is actually one scene that did not come out in this video. Uh, I'm not going to really reveal anything because I think that we should build the next video based on upon that scene. So stay Which tuned. Scene? I'm not. I can. <laughs> <laughs> ah. 
good idea. <laughs> So one of my favorite songs on the new album is Supersonic, and I just wanted to know, <laughs> um, what was the message behind that song? Um, I think there is like, uh, I would say that there is a lot of different messages in it, uh, but the whole song came uh, uh, to life based on a melody I was singing on the tour bus, on our previous US tour. And it was a very annoying melody, but I still thought that we could make such a cool song out of it. And it's like this. And Supersonic. And the Supersonic came out of that, like, it just sounded like a Supersonic melody. And, I mean, for me, it means that I am the, the uh, speed of light and... Uh, unbreakable, unstoppable, like most of our lyrics, you know, embracing how powerful the energy we have inside us can be, and that is what's going to lead us forward to our goals in life. Yes, that's a very accurate description. So, but it, it, it's funny, uh, you know, this um, this melody that Elise was singing because the other guys in the band they were a little bit freaked <laughs> out when they heard it. It's like, are you really going to make that into a song? But all, all, already back then, both me and Elise had like this you know, different chord progressions in our head. Mm -hmm. And the really funny part, what I really love about that song the most, I think, was that we got the chance to arrange like a real classical choir kind of thing. It's very small segments. It's very Queen, like Bohemian Rhapsody kind of thing to do. And we never done that in the, the Amaranth context. And it just fit perfectly to that uh, sort of vocal melody as well. Yeah, and so, it, it is very classical yeah. kind of melody. Also, which Olaf is very interesting. So that I think that's why when he got like tickled fingers to work on it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I mean, I, we usually yeah. work on things, uh, and they maybe don't end up on the album even. But we, because we love to write music, and that's what we, you know, enjoy the most. And so even like the most stupid ideas can, you know, become someone's favorite song. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's the kind of song where we didn't really hold back. Like if Elise wanted to do like operatic falsetto melodies in the C part, then she did operatic um, falsetto melodies in the C part, and so on and so on. So it's uh, it's really nice to just let, just let loose sometimes. Mm -hmm. Alright. So one thing that really stands out about Amaranth to me is that, especially in your earlier work, your songs had a lot of subject matter revolving around like technology and very sci-fi inspired. So I was wondering, like, what inspired you guys to write about such subject matter? Um, we were, I mean, me and all of us have been friends for like, I think it's 12 years now or something, and I remember when I was younger, at least, I'm still very, very into, I can, I can almost get like, I, cr I can cry about like how the world is changing, and that was such a big deal for me, and like how the environment was changing. They started to talk about this, the climate uh, race rising and all this. Things and Olaf was my best friend, and he was the one who actually listened to this because a lot of other people just thought that I was too deep, uh, starting to talk about this. And then, but then you came, and, and you're besides the fact that the earth is changing, it's also like um, Olaf had a lot of feelings regarding how the technology is taking over people's work and how we yeah. can um, um, create things. Of course, for good and bad, but at that state when we wrote that album, we were seeing this from a painful uh, perspective. But also, like some 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 lines, like for in digital world, for example, is like we never grow old and all that. It's like it's it's actually kind of happening now when they realize that you can give people electric cars, you can give them substances that makes us stop age and plastic surgery, of course, and all that. But uh, yeah, what do you? Well, like um, like the Did It Do a World song sort of describes uh, like technology and that kind of futurism and postmodernism is sort of a, a double-edged sword, because on the one hand, if you would show to like Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein that you could contain like the uh, combined knowledge of uh, of humanity in just a smartphone and you could have access to it at, at any place or at any time then they would be extremely impressed but at the end of the day we are using it for you know a lot of pointless social media so if you walk into a cafe 
like in, in Denver or Englewood, there will be a lot of youngsters just instead of interacting with each other, they will just, you know, watch random cat videos instead <laughs> on, on, on Facebook. So there's a lot of good things that comes with technology and I think that the digital world song describes that and it's also a little bit of a, a sarcastic or ironic thing because we are sort of a digital band with a lot of uh, keyboards and stuff like that yeah. but our hearts are very undigital yeah. you know what I mean very analog so and also for the two uh, first albums we wanted to have like this story to uh, you know inspire us to write lyrics and stuff like that but with the latest couple of albums and especially the latest album we wanted to make it a lot more personal Mm. So there's a lot less of the whole, you know, sci-fi theme. I think but that is because we got it out of our system. Yeah, exactly. So we, we talked about it enough. No, <laughs> it can be enough, of course, but we got we got used to it, and it's many years ago now that we, you know, it's it's scary, but you get used to things that happens, and also you can create your own future by just creating your an image which people are going to see from you, be like with social media and all that, like you mentioned. But behind the screens, you're maybe not that kind of person. And so there is a lot of things that... Actually, I heard on the news mm -hmm. that they're going to, in some states, they're going to invent like mobile-free day. And also, like the schools are not going to allow mobile phones anymore. Uh, some of them, some schools, I don't, I don't remember which country it was, but... And then I was like, oh my God, what are... What are they gonna do that, that now? You know, the kids who are so used to just sitting like this on the, mm. um, they have to actually interact with people, which I actually think is a good thing. Sounds like a wonderful idea. Actually. Yeah, that was the best thing I heard in yeah. a, a while. So who knows? Maybe that's gonna be the new thing in a in a, in a few years. Like, <laughs> hey guys, what if we just like actually talk <laughs> face to face? <laughs> How would that be? <laughs> So recently you've released that song as a music video, so we'd like to know what's the story behind that song like? What's going on in the music video? Is it inspired by like real life events that you've experienced? Yes, yes, it's about we sat down and we thought about like what we achieved and who we became lately and how we used to like, who we used to be bef before the band and um, and then we, yeah, that's that's what inspired us to write the the, the, the lyrics, and and then like music-wise, uh, we started to talk if we would have some kind of organic sounds like clap and stomp, so that people in the audience could actually be involved, you know, and um, um, yeah, then Olaf thought like, yeah, why not just build the whole song based upon that, and then he tried out different riffs and. Uh, we thought it was cool with just like long chords for once because Amaranth is usually so fast and yes, technical, he's a yeah. very technical, yeah. amazing metal guitarist, but I think this goes more towards like rock and it's just to make things simple, like how how life used to be. It used to be more simple than it is than, than it actually is now. Now it's just so complicated. <laughs> Uh, so this, yeah, it refers to our, our past and how, who we used to be and I was this kind of girl who was uh, having my, my, my girlfriends and we wanted to start a group like with, and we danced and we, we did those kind of things actually and so. Yeah, precisely. I mean, I didn't necessarily get uh, got wine yeah. thrown in my face, but it was close a couple of times. But I did play a lot of very crappy... Uh, piano shows and stuff like that I mean it's it's funny when you see that video because it really actually makes me think of you know how it used to be and what it's like now because sometimes you get a little spoil if you know, know what I mean and you have several hundreds of people buying tickets on pre-sales but you're still thinking that maybe we sh should be able to go higher maybe we you know should be able to sell even more tickets blah 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 and it's sometimes it's hard to appreciate what you already have achieved because you're always looking into the future so I think it was a healthy thing for us to to just look back a little bit because for example playing an acoustic guitar show or a piano show where there's like 18 people in a room and nobody gives a damn and they just think that you're disturbing their conversation I mean I do remember what it felt like and it was not a whole lot of fun it's a lot more fun being here at the Gothic Theatre in Englewood yeah absolutely and, and like I said I actually come from a very small city so it was like I moved to the big city and it was very hard to fit in and I always try to do that until I realized what I really wanted to do and that being having this job is already a place where you usually don't fit in <laughs> with the norms.
All right. So we know that recently Jake has left the band, which is very sad. But we also know that Chris has been filling in for quite some time. So how long has he been filling in? I think the first show that he stepped into must have been the USA tour that we did towards the end of 2015. Yeah, so, so almost two years. Is yeah, at least one yeah, and a half? One, yeah, it's closing into one and a half. Yeah. So, but no final decisions have been, uh, you know, taken regarding uh, Chris Adam. But we're enjoying this experience, with, you know, being on tour together, and it's not like we're in a super big hurry to uh, to get a permanent replacement because we need to be a hundred percent certain yeah I mean, we're going we have gone through this uh, kind of change before actually when Andy was taking time off because he got a kid and we had Henrik as a replacer and then he just kind of like Hen Andy faded out and Hen Henrik faded in uh, we don't know if this is going to be the, the situation now because he has smashed into pieces and he's very like devoted to his own project which we respect and it's really hard to find like really great singers these days. But if there is someone out there who wants to be explored, you can send us a link. <laughs> all right. For all those male vocalists out there, definitely <laughs> hit them up. Into you. <laughs> or write, actually. <laughs> So recently you were on the 70,000 tons of metal cruise. How was that? Oh, that's like no words. I mean, I was in heaven. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was just fantastic. I mean, I've never heard so much about it. And I've just figured because we've done like, what is it, 20, 25 cruises before mm -hmm. going, uh, you know, through, you know, northern locations up in Scandinavia. And it hasn't really been a lot of fun because you're stuck with so, so many people and the atmosphere can be a little bit, you know, intense. And we were thinking that, I mean, I was thinking at least that, okay, it looks really great to go to Haiti, uh, but still it's going to be like four or five days with a lot of metal people on, you know, on a small boat. But just everything about it, like the atmosphere and the bands that play there and the fans themselves, everybody was like really respectful and cool guys to hang out with. And once again, to go to, to Haiti, I think we had one of our best days in our entire life, you know, just laying there in a lagoon, relaxing, having a drink and, you know, just enjoying the sunshine. And then getting thoroughly sunburned as well. I actually did not get sunburned. <laughs> the rest of the band burned because they didn't use sun protection. I did. And also I have to mention, I, I got the chance to play one show, actually two shows, with Camelot again. And Alyssa Whiteclass was there because Arch Enemy also played the cruise. So I was surrounded by like great old friends. And I really had the time of my life. I mean, we love being here, but somehow we, we felt like we could stay there longer. And to everyone who haven't tried to be on the 70,000 tons, I think you should definitely try that out it was amazing all right well thank you so much for your time it was lovely having you and we really hope that you have a wonderful show thank, thank you, you very much, much. It was a pleasure mm -hmm. i hope you're gonna enjoy the show too all right and we hope you have a wonderful valentine's day oh, as well yes. oh, likewise, likewise. Likewise. Mm -hmm. all right this is alicia from access unlimited tv